Welcome to lecture 2 on module 2 of computer organization in which we will be discussing about the basics of assembly language which includes assembly language program syntax, assembler directives, binary notations and program execution. We know that the processor in order to perform particular task it has to be programmed. These programs can be written in different ways such as higher level language, assembly language and machine language program. However, the most of the computer systems in current generation are programmed using higher level language. This assembly language program as well as the machine language program has its own importance. Whatever higher level language we programs are written has to be converted into a machine language program. This assembly language program are written for a specific computer using the mnemonics such as mu, add, inc, branch instructions and there are many such instructions and they are represented using the mnemonics. And this set of mnemonics based on a, the task that has to be performed, the uh, mnemonics are grouped together to form an assembly language program. These mnemonics are written in a particular format and it has its own rule and the, such, such rules are termed as the syntax of the language. However, we know that this assembly language program that has to be converted to machine language so that the processor understands the task that it has to perform. In order to do that, we have a program called the assembler which converts the assembly language program to the machine language program. The user program is usually entered into the computer through the keyboard and these programs are stored in the memory. The assembler, the converted form of the program that is in machine code will be stored into the memory that will be in the form of binary. In this particular slide, we will look into some of the examples of assembly language program. So whenever you write an assembly language program, you need to follow a particular syntax and that syntax is given here as in case of here which represents which has a label in the beginning, then it has uh, operation, it has operation, it has uh, operands and the comment. This comment has a least significant. This is, this comment is just to uh, a programmer to understand, or a, a person, other if some other person wants to understand the program written by someone else, then these comments play a major role. Uh, but whenever you compile this, whenever you compile this program, these comments will not be loaded into the memory, or it will not be converted. Uh, it will be not taken for forward for any other processing. Whereas this label operation and operands play a major role in case of a programming. If we take the example here in case of uh, mu r not comma sum here, you, the label is not present here. We no need to have a label here. We have a mnemonic. You have the operands. Among the operands, you have r not as the source source operand and sum as the destination operand. So what, what it does is the move is the operation that has to be performed on these, these R0 and sum. So what it does is it copies the content that is present in R0 and places it in the uh, sum register or the memory represented by the sum. Here this particular format is user readable or the user can understand this particular program but the processor will not understand this format instead what we need what we are supposed to do is we need to convert this form of program to the binary representation that is represented in the form of ones and ones and zeros this program for example mu r0 comma sum has to be converted to equivalent ones and zeros the mnemonic, each and every mnemonic that is uh, compatible with a particular processor 
will have a corresponding binary representation for example if i take mu uh, for example uh, let us say that it is represented by 11110100 this is the binary equivalent of mu if if this is the binary equivalent of mu similarly we have many other by uh, many other mnemonics and each mnemonic will be represented by unique number and that number is called as the opcode so whenever an assembler translates a assembly language program to higher level uh, machine language program we need we need an assembler that converts a user readable program to a binary representation and the opcode is the one which will be replaced by the mnemonic in case of translation similarly we have the compilers that convert the higher level language to the machine language program in case of computer systems there are different types of files that can be generated the machine language program contains the patterns of zeros and ones specifying a particular instruction these instructions will be executed by the computer or the processor in particular the program that the user writes in the alphanumeric text format is called the source program this pro source program can be either written in assembly langu language program or the higher level language program such as c c++ or so on these source programs are assembled into the machine language program to generate the object program whereas in case of um, assembly language program if the source program is assembly language program the assembler directly converts this assembly language program into the object program whereas if the source program is written in higher level language it has to be converted into a corresponding machine language which in turn generates the object program the assembly language for a given computer may be case sensitive in some cases in some cases it may not be it depends on the processor that is present in a particular computer system the assembler program has the capacity to read the user program analyze it and then generate the desired machine language program and most of the times it will be in the optimized way or the op the program will be more optimized in this particular slide we will be discussing about the assembler directives let us assume that we need to represent some numericals and most of the times the programmer uses the uh, uses a certain name to represent some numericals and a programmer cannot directly use those numbers or use those names instead of a number instead he has to convey the assembler that he is going to use a particular name instead of the numericals in order to do that we need to follow the particular statement here as we have written here some eq 200 this indicates that this is a constant 200 and instead of writing 200 directly in the program we can use the name sum this sum represents 200 so if we look into the example here mu r not comma sum r not comma sum this sum is nothing but 200 so what happens is in this case we have already discussed about the steps here in our previous lectures what happens here is move the content of r not to sum sum is nothing but 200 so this 200 behaves as a memory location so what happens is the content of r not is copied to the location pointed by the address 200 so here the r not content will be transferred into the location 200 edge so what happens is it simply informs the assembler that the name sum has to be replaced by the value 200 whenever the higher the assembly language program is assembled to the object program 
the assembler just replaces the name sum with 200. This is how an assembler directives are used. There are different types of assembler directives in case of assembly language program. Each assembler directives has a particular task. It has task that has to be performed. The assembler directives or the statement what we write does not even denote an instruction. That means it, will, it is not assembled or it will not be converted directly to the assembly language program. The in statement what you write is not at all an instruction. Instead, what the assembler does is it just replaces wherever there is some, it will be replaced by the value 200. And this statement will never appear in the object program. The object program is the, comp or the assembled version of the assembly language program. So th these statements will never appear in the object program. In the object program, you will just find this equivalent value of 200. In this particular slide, we will look into the different types of assembler directives that are usually present in case of assembly language program. The first directive is the equit directive that is represented as EQU, which informs assembler about the value. If, if you want to assign some name with a particular uh, value, it can be done using the assembler directive EQU, as we have seen in the previous example, like sum, sum EQU. 200 this indicates the sum sum will be represented by the 200 the next assembler directive what we have is the origin suppose you want to load the data initial data from the location 500 from you need to start loading the program from the address 500 of the memory in such cases you can do it by using the assembler directive origin followed by the address. This indicates that the program has to be or the data has to be loaded into the memory with the address starting at 500. So the first data will be stored at the address 500 and it continues based on the size of the data. The next assembler directive what we have is the data world. So the data word directive is used to inform the assembler the number of entries in the list. For example, if you want to find the largest number, if you have uh, 10 numbers and if you want to find the largest of the number among the 10 numbers, so the count 10 has to be loaded in the program. This can be done, the count can be given to the program by using the data word. For example, if I name the count as n in the program, then if I write followed by the assembler directive data word and 10, this indicates that in the list I have 10 numbers out of which I need to find the largest number. If you want to find the largest among the 10 numbers, then the value of n should be 10. It can be assigned in the assembly language as shown here, n data word 10. Similarly, we have the reserve directive. The reserve directive declares that the memory block of 400 bytes is reserved for the data. For example, in the same example of uh, uh, instead of finding the largest number, uh, if you want to sort the numbers in ascending order, there will be one uh, source where, where source list and the, the, let, let us assume we have one more list we, in which we will be uh, placing the result or you want to place some datas in, uh, in a particular order. In order to do that, you need to initially reserve the space. For example, you want to store 10 numbers in one location. In such cases, you need to reserve the 10 spaces to store that particular value in the memory. In order to do that, you have the assembler directive reserve. You have the assembler directive reserve which reserve for example if i want to reserve some 400 byte spaces 
then I need to use the assembler directive reserve followed by the number of locations that you need to reserve and you need to assign a name to the address from which the allocation or the uh, byte spaces will be reserved. For example, if your previous uh, address is 204, if your previous address uh, is 204, the next address that is 208, 200 and sorry, 208. will be assigned to the value num1 to will be assigned to the value num1 and from 208 address starting from 208 uh, 400 locations will be 400 different locations will be reserved to store a particular value that is intended in the program and the last and uh, the directive one uh, directive is the end when an assembler comes across this particular directive, it indicates that the program has ended, means the last instruction of the program will be always the end, that indicates the last line of the program. In this particular slide, we will discuss about assembly program and its execution. The source program, usually written in the assembly language program, will be converted into machine language that is object program. This object program will be executed by the processor. So it is important for an uh, processor to understand from where it has to fetch the first instruction or what data it has to fetch from what particular location. So in order to perform this particular task, the assembler has to assign the initial address where it stores the first instruction and it is specified by the origin directive. It is specified in the origin assembler directive. Along with that, it also has to insert the constants that are given by the data world and also has to reserve the number of byte spaces that are specified in the reserve command. Along with that, it also has to assign the numerical value or it has to replace the names that are specified by the EQ directive so that the numerical itself can be used instead of the names. As we discussed in our previous slides, the assembler directives will have some of the numerical values as well as the, the names that correspond to a particular values. The assembler does not directly replace the name with their actual address. Instead, the assembler computes the branch offset. That means, if suppose we have the branch instruction, we have the branch instruction at the some address 200, at address 200 and here in the branch we will be specifying the address 220. That means it has to uh, jump to 220 location, that means it has to space, it has to skip these many locations, 20 locations it has to skip. Instead of specifying the 220, the assembler directives or the assembler computes the difference between these two address, the actual address and the current address and the difference will be loaded in the instruction. That difference will be considered as the branch offset. And as the assembler scans through the source program, it keeps track of all the names and numericals that are specified by the assembler directives. And it will make a list and the, that particular list will be named as the symbol table. That particular list will be named as symbol table. And 
this symbol table will be complete only once the assembler scans through the entire source program. Now the problem arises whenever there is a forward loop, whenever you need to jump forward, if the list is not at all having a particular operand or the particular name is not at all listed in the symbol table, if the operand with such names comes, ac comes across for execution, then the assembler will not be able to replace that name with a particular value. So in order to avoid such problems, a source program goes through second time or the program gets executed, the assembler scans through the source program twice. In the first pass, it creates the symbol table during which it records all the names and the corresponding values and in the second pass, it replaces all the names with the particular values. This such an assembler, such an assembler is called as the two pass assembler. And this reduces or uh, avoids the problem that is arriving in the single pass method. Once the program is written, it has to be converted into an object code. And this object code that is generated after assembling has to be transferred to the memory of the computer system. And in order to transfer the object code to the memory system, we need an additional program called loader, which will load the program using particular input operations. And it will transfer the machine code from the disk into a specified memory space of the computer system. The loader also must know about the length of the program and the address in the memory where it has to be stored and as specified by the origin directive of the source program. The assembler usually places this information in the header preceding the object code. Once this object code is loaded, the loader starts the execution of the program by branching to the first instruction that has to be executed. When this object program begins executing, it continues to proceed and it will complete the execution if there is no any logical errors in the program. In order to help the user to find the other programming errors, the system software usually includes the debugger program. This program enables the user to stop the execution of the object program at some point of interest and examine for a particular error. It also specifies the contents of the register and the memory locations in particular. In this particular slide, we will be discussing about the number notation. When dealing with the numerical values, it is often convenient for us to represent those numbers in the decimal notation. However, the program, the same decimal numerical values will be stored in the computer memory as a binary number. In this regard, the most of the assemblers allow the numerical values to be specified in different ways. It can be represented in a 8-bit binary number. For example, in this case, if we uh, want to represent a number 93 in binary 8-bit, then it can be represented as 01011101. If, that, if this value is used as an immediate operand, it can be given as a decimal number as in the instruction. So, uh, in this particular instruction, add hash 93,R1. This hash represents a uh, type of addressing mode that is immediate addressing mode. Here, 
the content of R1 will be the destination register, the content of R1 will be added with the immediate value 93 and the result is stored back in R3 uh, is equal to R1 plus 93 and result is stored back in 93. So here this 93 is the decimal number. By default, it will be it will take it as an, uh, a decimal number. Instead, we have in the in case of uh, binary numbers, the same decimal number can be represented as the binary numbers, but it is necessary for us to inform the assembler that the number uh, represented here is in binary. It can be done by using or using the prefix symbol with percent this percent sign indicates that the number uh, represented or the one of the operand that is written is in binary is in binary similarly there is if if the number or if the word length is 32 bit or a 64 bit you it is difficult for us to write the 34 bits or 32 bits. In order to ease this, uh, a programmer can adopt a compactly representation, a compact representation uh, as a hexadecimal. In case of hexadecimal, we will group, for example, if we take that number 0101, 1101, 1, 1, we need to group we need to separate a group of four bits and represent it in hexan hexadecimal representation. Uh, 1101 is uh, D, is D, and 0101 is 5. So this can be represented, the same 93 in decimal can be represented in hexadecimal as 5D. So now there is a difference between this representation and uh, this particular representation. You need to also mention in uh, the assembler that the number whatever you are using is hexadecimal. In order to do that, you need to uh, use a prefix as a dollar symbol. Whenever there is a dollar symbol, the number represented will be in hexadecimal. If you have a percentile sign, if the number represented will be in the binary. If you don't use any prefix, then that indicates a decimal number. 